Good evening and welcome to the first virtual Rehoboth Pentecostal Church virtual Bible study. Uh, we come to you tonight from our home office, hoping soon to uh, do this from the church uh, church's office once it's done. I uh, welcome you as you start to join um, tonight. I, I want to remind you that we are we are here to uh, to have a Bible study to allow you the opportunity to make comments uh, that you you would want to. Uh, so feel free to do that. I may reiterate that a few times tonight uh, as we are as we are live. So just make sure that if you have a prayer request that you want us to be made aware of, uh, feel free to um, um, to post that in there also in the comments section. Uh, prayer requests or comments on the Bible study, uh, make sure that you, you post those in the comments section. Tonight as we get started, I, uh, I, I got a, a praise report first of all that I, I wanted to touch base on. And that is that Facebook was down for the whole day the other day. I didn't hear of any repercussions or anyone uh, uh, struggling or failing with that. So I wanted to make sure that everyone knew that it was not your phone or anything of the sorts, but that it was uh, it was the Facebook. So uh, again, I didn't see any bad things happen because of that. Tonight, as we go to prayer, uh, I, I want to begin by praying for uh, her name, nickname, I think they call her, is Little Bit uh, from Dee's Diner. She works there as the cashier. If, you have, if you've been in there before here in Owensboro, uh, you've seen her. Her daughter passed away. Uh, many times we would visit that restaurant and we would see Little Bit, and I understand that her daughter has passed away. So uh, we want to remember her. Let's also pray for uh, my Aunt Martha Nell uh, as we pray tonight. Let's let's remember her. I understand she's still uh, not well at 100%, so we want to pray for her. Uh, my nephew, Colin, I want to keep praying for him. As I understand, he, he stands still in need of prayer with the correct medication to, to help him in his struggle that he's having. Let's also remember uh, Sister Donna. Uh, Sister Donna in our church right now is suffering from cirrhosis of the liver. Uh, she's going through more tests. And so let's just keep praying for her that, uh, that she is going to be healed and do, do very well. I also tonight want to pray for uh, Brother and Sister Taylor. We, we love uh, our Bishop Taylor, and I, I want to uh, uh, keep him in prayer. Also, Sister Martha, let's keep Sister Martha in prayer. I just saw that post up. So let's, let's keep her in prayer also tonight. Uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Those that are, are watching, if you could just bow your head right in the room where you're at and let us pray. Lord, tonight we thank you for the opportunity to get together with our, our Facebook family and friends and Lord, our church congregation. You said in your word, let us assemble ourselves together, even more so as we see that day approaching. Lord, we know and believe that we are assembled together, Lord, if it is, but uh, on this same page, sharing the gospel, the good news, the word of God. We pray for every request tonight, Lord, that will be uh, brought up during this uh, broadcast, and Lord, those that have been mentioned already. Lord, we pray for Sister Martha, we pray for Little Bit, we pray for Aunt Marthy and my nephew Colin. Lord, we pray also, Jesus, for Sister Donna and Brother and Sister Taylor. Lord, we pray for our neighborhood that has been a neighborhood at the church that has been so infiltrated with the, the nastiness of this world, the perverseness and the unruliness of kids. Lord, we pray tonight for your strength upon each household represented in our church. Help us, God, to be uh, more faithful to your work, more faithful to service. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray and we thank you, Lord. Please bless our church. So tonight, uh, 
Uh, I got just a couple of announcements as we get ready to go uh, to the Bible study. First announcement is please don't forget that we have an outreach committee Sunday school teacher meeting on um, on Sunday after Sunday school. That affects brother and sister Bays as well as uh, sister Ashley and then the, the outreach committee. Uh, the goal of that meeting is to establish some initiatives in the fall for outreach as well as uh, building up our Sunday school, which we are extremely excited about. Uh, if if you're able to join us, church members, on October 16th, we will be having uh, a church cleaning day. Brother David Young is managing that for us. He's been elected uh, by one vote, and that was me, to uh, head that up. So a few things that are coming so, uh, that day that we'll need help with. So please jump in and help us if you can. Uh, also, we are having a bake sale at Kroger's on Starlight. Don't forget that. That is November the 6th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, Brother Stephen Alvey is heading that up for us and managing it. So uh, if you have questions, please see him. October 31st, we plan on having our annual trunk or treat uh, at the church. Uh, with that being said, we will have one service um, at 1 p.m. that afternoon. Uh, and then we will meet again uh, for the trunk or treat from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Now this year, something fun, something different is that we will be decorating our trunks uh, so that everyone can be a part of the competition. If you want to be, you don't have to be. It is highly encouraged. Uh, we will be giving away a gift certificate of your choice uh, to the winner. So uh, I am excited about that. Come join us, come have fun, and just uh, uh, enjoy the trunk or treat. Now, some have said, well, trunk or treat is, uh, is on the 31st, which is on a Sunday. Yes, it is. As much as I do not like to cancel our Sunday services, let me say that I do believe this is a great form of outreach. Uh, we did it last year, and we had... I believe the last count was 250, 280 people come through the line um, there at Rehold with Pentecostal. And so we we this year will be handing out tracts along with cards, um, uh, pamphlets on the church. Those have all been ordered church, and um, so we're ready to give those out. Tonight, if you have your Bibles, turn with me. You should have your Bibles. You're at home. As a matter of fact, they should be in the handiest place ever. But we are going to the book of Acts chapter 16. And uh, we are going to talk about Paul's second missionary journey. Church, I really only have a handful of scriptures to talk about tonight. Uh, I don't, I don't want everything to um, to be just uh, reading and talking. I want you to interact. So feel free to post some comments on the uh, about the Bible study, uh, even things maybe that you would like us to touch on. Uh, we have the opportunity to do it here. So. Uh, Brother Michael, I see, pray for your mom that you can get off the CPAP. Uh, we will be doing that. Amen. We, we pray for you every day. I had the opportunity uh, yesterday to see, speak to Brother Michael by phone. I forgot to mention, though, too, uh, somebody post this in the comments so that we don't lose it. But let's pray for Brother uh, J.R. House. Uh, I had a good conversation with him today. Let me say that he is... He's new to our church, uh, and um, I just have fallen in love with him, of course, and Sister Susie. We've known for some time, but let's just keep uh, keep him in prayer as he's going through a couple of things, and we all know how that is. And Alyssa and Christian, we are in Acts chapter 16, and we are starting with verse 24 tonight. So it says in Acts 16, 24, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Let me go back and just say that Paul and Silas had been beaten because they did the right thing. They cast out the demon from this soothsayer who last week, those that were in service, you might remember that we were talking about um, individuals that 
that were uh, uh, possessed and the fact that it's like a python kind of spirit that just wrapped itself around uh, this young lady and she was bringing large sums of money. She was making the owners, her slave owners, she was making them rich by the funds that she was bringing in to uh, the, the, them because of what she was doing. She was soothsaying. She was telling the future. She was possessed by the devil. Let me say this uh, because I believe that it is important. We as a church know better than to visit soothsayers or Toro card readers or tarot, whatever they're called. Uh, card readers, we know better than to seek for our horoscopes and read that sort of stuff. And as we discussed last week, and we'll touch on it and try to get back off of it, that stuff only uh, allows the avenue of Satan in our life. That is something that we must understand. What we open our home up to, uh, whether it's from the magazines that we read, the, the news articles, if it, if it uh, is television shows, whatever we are, even video games, Elijah, who is watching in the other room, it, it, is, it is not f a funny situation or, or position that we get ourselves into because here's what happens. Sister Amy, it's good to see you and Brother Freddie tonight. But let me say that we, we open up avenues for Satan to drive right on into our life. We do it. And that's what happened to this young lady. We are not told uh, the history of how she came to be a part of this soothsaying occupation, but we know that she was possessed by the devil. Just today, uh, I, I, I finished a book um, this evening, and it was on addiction. And the young man, or older man, he's probably twice my age now, but he was talking about an addiction that he was a part of. And I won't go into all the details, but I can tell you that it started with just one look. Many people have said it started with one drink, or it started with one party, or it started with, with one dollar in the gambling machine. Whatever we are trying to be a part of, if it's to make ourselves look more uh, uh, appealing to the world, or if we are trying to make ourselves look like we, we know more than anyone else, whatever the case may be, we at times, if we are not careful, we are opening up avenues for Satan to use us to attack us, and we begin to lose our relationship with God. Uh, let me just quickly say that if you are joining us live, please let us know that you're here, uh, and we'd love it if you share this on your, your Facebook page. So we, we see that in verse 24 that... Uh, Paul and Silas were thrown into the middle of the prison. They were thrown and they uh, there for, for security. They were thrown there and their feet were put fast in the stocks. Let me read from my notes for a minute. And it says, my note says that the inner prison was so that these two could not escape. This was the maximum security part of the prison, if you will, to make sure that they went nowhere. The stocks were added to hold their feet. Church, we got to understand that many times the world and Satan tries to keep us in the stocks, in, in, in chains. Uh, it tries to keep us chained down, if you will, to sin and addictions. But regardless of what's going on in the world around us, I think it was Sister Christy and I talking about this Sunday afternoon, that regardless of what's going on around us, all the chaos, all the problems, all the sicknesses, the diseases and problems and addictions, God is is still able to deliver us. We are his church. We are his children. Let me um, preface the next phase by saying that we all will slip up. We'll all fail. We have problems. Uh, I die daily, Paul said. I go to the Lord daily and repent. We better, and we do. But here's the thing. When we are knocked down and when we don't feel good enough, when we feel that we are just doing nothing but failing God, look up for our redemption is not of this earth. Our, our salvation is not in money. Our salvation is not in fame. Uh, we, don't, we don't have to be known by everybody. What we need to be known by is Christ Jesus and himself, himself crucified for us. As long as our name is written down there, Paul and Silas were suffering. 
Remember the the first time that we, or the, the first Bible study that we went over with Paul's first missionary journey, which took us a couple of three, four months to get through. We talked about how Paul was even stoned to death and thrown outside of the city so that um, uh, he would be eaten by the, by the vultures and the, the wild beasts. But what happened? Paul got up. And he began to go again. He didn't stop because he got knocked down and because it was easy to quit. If it, if it was God's will that we quit every time, Paul and Silas wouldn't have been in the inner prison. They wouldn't have just been beat again. And you and I wouldn't be sitting in the house of God on Sundays and sitting here now talking and discussing the word of God, would we? If it was easy to give up, nobody would do anything. We would just give up. But let me remind you, many times, Satan tries to keep us in the stocks and in the chains and in addiction, but God is able. This prison guard that kept Paul and Silas, I want to talk about him for just a minute because it seems like the rest of this uh, context tonight is on him. And it's just a, a couple, three more scriptures that I want to get through. But the prison guard would have been a tough, calculated, and very dependable person. Knowing that he could be killed just for losing a prisoner, he would be diligent and do his due diligence to make sure that those people were in the prison, that they could not get out. But let me say that it makes no difference who's trying to keep you bound, if it's sickness uh, you know, Sister Amy, I know that many times you don't feel good and, and, and it can hinder us in our walk with God. And I know that uh, there's different ones that struggle with different things. But let me say this. there, we When we put our faith in God, it doesn't matter what Satan can bring our way. God is looking for us to be faithful to him. We see that Paul and Silas were thrown in the, the middle of the jail, that the prisoner wanted to, the, the, the prison guard wanted to keep them there to make sure that they, they didn't get out, which is exactly what Satan wants to do to us. He wants us to have no victory. Rehoboth Pentecostal Church, I firmly believe, as I was talking to the board members on Saturday and then uh, some of the outreach committee on Sunday afternoon, we, we were talking that, that God is, that, that Satan really hinders and hits our church. He really tries to plow it hard at us because we are a mighty force. He is trying right now so strongly to build up uh, strongholds within the church to, to bring us down and defeat us. He wants to keep us in that prison. He wants to keep us in the stocks and the chains that he thinks are there to keep us down and to, to bind us uh, and to divide us. But Christ said, I come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. You can't have life in the middle of the prison. Amen. Let me let me say this tonight. Uh, as we get into verse 25, let's just read that real quick. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, Brother Donnie, it's good to see you and Sister Patty tonight. And thank you, Brother Stephen. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. How true that that is. I feel the presence of God tonight because I know that Satan wants to keep us in the middle of that prison with stocks and chains, but through Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors, church. And and I'm talking right now, those that are visiting, thank you, and we welcome you tonight. But let me say this, Rehoboth Pentecostal Church, we have a great job to do. And it's not going to be done within the four walls of Rehoboth Pentecostal Church. It's going to be done in the streets and on our jobs. It's going to be done in the, in the highways and the hedges and with our family. And we're getting ready to embark upon the holidays. And make sure, I don't care who you're with or what you're around. I talk to some who say, I can't go because uh, there's cursing and there's drinking and there's smoking, and I totally understand that. But if you do have to go to your family, and maybe they're not saved, you demand that they pray before that dinner. Don't even put a bite in your mouth if they're not willing to pray. Show who you are in Christ Jesus. Sister Don, it's good that you and Brother Noel are with us from big old Boonville, Indiana. We love you guys. Let's read that again in verse uh, 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and said and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. The, the commentator John Phillips, who I, who I read after a lot, suggests that with nothing else to do and in so much pain, 
The joy of spreading the gospel and being in the Lord's will allowed them the strength to sing and to pray. What, what do we do when we are in a valley? What do we do when we are in the shackles of life? How do we handle it? Paul and Silas told us, showed us, I'm sorry, that they prayed and they sang praises. I have preached this message many times. In, in, in being a minister 26 years, God has laid this on my heart multitudes of time. And, and I, have, uh, I have shared this and I have preached this. But, but let, me, let me say this, that, that there is something about praising God in every situation. Uh, Brother Stephen, you sing that song many times. The God of the mountain is still the God in the valley. we got to learn to praise him regardless of where we are. If we're on the mountain, if we're in the valley. Paul and Silas, they sang praises unto God. But let me say something. Every prisoner heard them. And Sister Alvy says, but God, he always makes the difference. Yes, he does. He makes the difference. Not us, but he. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison prison were shaken. So the foundations of the prison were shaken. Hello, Michael. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open. And everyone's bands were loose. Let me read a scripture. Uh, 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 let me read what Sister Amy just said. I'm not going to let Satan control me anymore. I'm putting all my faith in God. Isn't that what we all should do? If Sister Amy has professed it, let's all do it. Amen. And he said in Romans 8, 19, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Do you understand that when Paul and Silas were in their shackles, they were in the stocks, they were in the inner part of the prison for the maximum security, if you will, of the day, they were waiting for God to do something. They couldn't do anything laying on their backs, some would suggest, and even it's been suggested uh, in commentators that I have read after, they have said that, uh, uh, that the middle of the prison was also the sewer and the infestation of mice and rats. And let me say this, if that was where they were, it makes no difference. If it was the cleanest concrete floor or if they were standing against the wall, they were trying to be bound by Satan, church. And that's exactly what Satan is trying to do to you. He is trying to bind us. He's trying to devour us. He's trying to kill us. And he's trying to steal our joy, our victory, our, our foundations. He's trying to steal the happiness. He's trying to steal our finances. So the scripture is true, Brother Alvy, that says Satan come to kill, steal, and to destroy. You better believe it's true. And in the time that we're living in, he's working over time to make sure that he is doing just that. But Paul and Silas, waiting for the expectation of the manifestation of the sons of God, they were waiting. And when it happened, the Bible says as they were praising God and they were singing, Christian and Alyssa say the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he does, doesn't he? Amen. But we know that they were, they were not devising a plan uh, to escape, but rather an eternal plan. The singing caused the prison to shake and the doors opened. This is the power of praise. You say, I can't, I can't even pay my rent this month, Brother Alvin. and I don't know where groceries are going to come from. And I'm hearing that groceries are getting ready to skyrocket because of supply and demand. And the price of gas is 309 here in Owensboro and, and this and that. Satan is doing nothing but trying to keep you in the middle of the prison, church. But when we praise and when we sing, that's why we come to the house of God. That's why uh, Brother Stephen says all the time, I've been praying in the shower today. That's what we do. As a church, we don't just come to church to sit in our seats and to, to, to punch in and out our spiritual time card. We come with the expectation of the creature waiting for the manifestation of God. We are expecting something, aren't we? When uh, they were laying in that prison and and it made it did not matter the situation to them. The power of praise was the same yesterday as it was for Paul and Silas as it is for us today. 
But the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors opened, and every band was loose. Which means that not only Paul and Silas were loose, but that everyone else in the jail was loose as well. And we see that um, today, when we begin to pray in the church, I, I remember just a few Sundays ago, we had an awesome service. And what had happened is we come into the church and we began to sing and we began to worship and you could just feel the Spirit of God coming down from heaven and penetrating the, 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 the building and touching everyone. And all of a sudden, there was people crying and praying and running around the church and walking around and going to the altar. That is the manifestation of God that we are waiting for. And the fact of the matter is we can have that every time, every time. Thank you, Sister Becca. Throw me on that big 80-inch television. I'm sure I look better there. I'm going to take a drink. I want to say I did buy a bicycle today. Me and Becca have been talking about buying a bicycle. I bought a bicycle today. And if I can keep the paparazzi out of my neighborhood, I'm going to attempt to ride it. So uh, just say a prayer. Stephen says I need a helmet. I know. I know. He's going to say that. Uh, let me let me keep going here for just a minute because I don't want to keep you much longer. But the Bible says that the keeper of the prison in verse 27 uh, awakened out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled. I want to speak to something real quick because it's on my heart. Uh, Christian and Alyssa were trying very hard to get a house over here in Owensboro. And it seemed like that um, for some reason... God would close the door on one house and we'd go to another. Quickly, God would close the door on that house. And then it looked like the last house that we looked at, that's what the Lord wanted, right? But for some reason, the Lord said, not right now. God doesn't always say yes to those things that we want. He also doesn't always say no. I believe it's the will of God. The Christian and Alyssa live in Owensboro. I, I believe that and I believe it will come. It just it wasn't God's time right now. It's better that we wait on the Lord, that we expect Him to do it as we follow Him. Amen. Just like Paul and Silas were waiting for God to move, church, it's time that we stop trying to push God in the direction we want Him to go, but allow Him to start pushing us in the direction and react when He's pushing. Brother Michael says we need to push the devil away and focus on Jesus. And God is coming back soon. We we not enough time left. This world coming to an end. Yes, it is. And amen. I look forward to the Lord's return. So the jailer is awoken by the earthquake. It's obvious that that would wake him up. And is made aware uh, to get to the prison. Seeing the doors open and supposing that all the prisoners had left, he was ready to commit suicide. You see what he says. He drew out the sword and he would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Brother David says, we never know how many will see our trials and learn about God from our praise in trials. Man, is that ever true? And I I think about um, our own sister, sister Ashley Philpott. I know that woman has been through, as Brother David has, things in their life that some of us will never have to go through. And I thank God that the foundation was shaken, Brother David, and that you and Sister Ashley and those just like you and, and, and the, those of us that are still sometimes bound by things, that that foundation can be shaken and those chains can be broken loose. God can break every fetter. Just like the demoniac in in the garden, we know he he was in the tombs, he was in the he was in the cemetery. But one day, <laughs> Christ came his way, and 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 he he did not want anything to do with Christ, did he? But he ran to him because that's what the Spirit, that's what God is drawing us to him. Amen. Let me let me continue reading here. The jailer is woken, seeing that the doors open and supposing that the prisoner had left, prisoner prisoners had left, he was ready to commit suicide. He knew either by suicide or death of some other form, he was going to be tortured publicly for allowing those prisoners to leave because that was the punishment for losing your prisoners. But here's what happened. 
Paul cried with a loud voice in verse 28, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. That That's amazing. Paul, as I preached several months ago, he said in the scripture, he became all things to all people to win some. This is Paul becoming a prisoner, a jailer, and keeping everybody corralled and not allowing them to leave. What's amazing, no one left. Sister Alvy would say, how merciful was the Lord to this to this guard. Silas and Paul could have fled, but that wasn't the will of God. God had a plan, and he was leading each one of them, as he will lead us today if we will allow him to. I, I see that, that Paul said, do yourself no harm. After having the light to see the, the prison, he quickly verifies and he trembles. And what does he do? The Bible says that, well, let me say this. First of all, this shows the ability of God to humble even the strongest of men. Okay? He was ready to commit suicide. And then here's what happens. He falls down in verse 29 at Paul and Silas's feet. The Bible says in verse 29, Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. How, how beautiful that that is. This man who was... Uh, calculated and he was he was tough he was strong he was the jailer and he would probably have to manhandle some people he was the he was the brother david of our church if you will amen the church bouncer no i'm just kidding but he would he would come in and he would see paul and silas and all the other jail all the other prisoners and we aren't told how many there were but we know there were others and paul and silas showed their integrity he showed that uh, they were going to do the right thing, that they were not afraid of the consequences of being in jail because God was going to deliver them. Here's what. We do not see that Paul and Silas fought against the jailer when he chained them up. We do not read where they spoke evil of the jailer or spoke wrongly to him. How many times, and I'm just as guilty, as Becca is, let me say that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm teasing you. But let me say this: How many times have we been in a situation, and we badmouthed somebody because of what we just went through? Uh, it could be that we had a bad waiter or waitress, and we are venting to the manager. We don't know what that waiter or waitress is going through, but we just know that they've made us unhappy. Paul and Silas. Uh, doing the same thing, being made unhappy, understand that they had just been beat and their back was was striped with blood from being beaten and slashed open. And then all of a sudden, if, if what I read is correct, they are thrown on their backs and chains and stocks put on their feet. Think about that for just a moment. But never... Did they badmouth that we read? And I don't believe they would have. Because, see, blessings and cursings don't come out of the same mouth. Brother David says the other prisoners apparently were affected by the good Paul and Silas of Paul and Silas's example. How true that that is. Because we see that they were they were singing and they were uh, uh, praying and, and that every prisoner heard that. Hey, Chrissy, I'm glad you're on here tonight. Thank you for joining us. But uh, And I love my sister. Let's keep her in prayer too. But we see that Paul and Silas were only sharing the good news just like Paul said their example paid off because all the prisoners stayed with Paul and Silas and when the jailer came in <laughs> he sees everybody standing around corralled around not running out not running the streets and trying to get to family's house or a safe haven they were in the jail together he brought them out here's what he said he said he the Bible says that he brought them out so the jailer brings out Paul and Silas, and he says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? As Brother David pointed out, and as we were reading our notes, if Paul and Silas would have badmouthed this man and cursing at him, and sometimes we get mad in our road rage, I know I'm bad about it, and they were laying on their spiritual horn and just telling this man off for putting him in the stocks and chains, he may not have reacted to this. He may have come in and just started throwing them back in their cages. But that's not what happened. He was affected by their good example, as Brother David said. Uh, 
and he wanted what they had. That's the problem with the church today is some of us, some of us, we, not us, not in the church, not our church, I hope, but there are some churches that you go in, you're not made to feel comfortable, you're not, you're, you're made as an outcast, especially if you don't look the part or act the part or you don't say the right things or you don't, maybe your hair is different than everyone else's or you have uh, markings on your body. But listen, God didn't come for all that. God came to seek and to save those that are lost. The lost aren't going to be and do and look and say and feel like we do that have been saved for 40 years but we need to show them love and that's what Paul and Silas did Paul and Silas helped the jailer kept the kept the prisoners together and then he brings Paul and Silas out and he says sirs what must I do to be saved we do not know the actions or words that will minister to others. All we have to do is we have to show them the love. And we see that Paul and Silas simply lived in front of this man what they believed. Not only that, they, they, they lived what they preached. And that was enough to get him saved. Church, family, friends, visitors, loved ones, let me say this. We have to love and we have to, to show and we have to do and we have to give. It's just like the man that I really, I really like him. <clears throat> he just bought some property from the church and uh, the board voted and we, uh, we allowed him to purchase the property. He, he later, after the uh, acquisition was done, he said, uh, he said, can I come visit your church? And I said, well, Ken, of course you can. And he said, well, I'm kind of rough around the edges. And when I was around him and uh, Brother David was letting him in the old dilapidated house that was there, which, by the way, he's doing an amazing job fixing up, um, he, he used some words that we don't use. He did. And we didn't tell him, you don't say that in front of us. We didn't say uh, anything negative or derogatory to him at all. And then what happened? He asked, can I come to your church? I'm rough around the edges, but will you accept me? I said, we would love to have you at the church. And church, that is what we're supposed to do, right? We aren't supposed to judge, and we aren't supposed to criticize. We aren't supposed to put down. Sometimes as hard as that can be, I, I watch my little sister on here making comments and how much I love her. And her and I will get into it sometime like brothers and sisters do. And then we kiss and we don't literally kiss, but we make up. And that's, that's what we do. But when we are around the world and we are around the unsaved, let me tell you something. we got to let our light shine. Because just like Brother David pointed out, just like Paul and Silas showed us, we don't know what example we're going to be to those that aren't saved. Church, we've been on here for longer than I thought, but let's pray tonight as we close. And let me say this, we have 10 scriptures left in this chapter. I'm hoping to get through <laughs> some of them. Uh, we made it through, what, five scriptures tonight, which may be a record for us on a Wednesday night because we get into some major conversations about this stuff. But thank you for interacting. Please post your comments. Uh, share this Bible study on your Facebook page. We will do this Bible study <clears throat> virtually every Wednesday night. Uh, and that will be at 7 o'clock here in Owensboro for Rehoboth Pentecostal Church. We don't want to take a great deal of your time up. I don't want to lose your attention. But let me say this. We'd love it if on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. or Sunday nights at 6 p.m. Uh, you would come visit us at 701 Point Extra Street. We, are, we might be a small church, but let me tell you something. We have some powerful movements of the Holy Ghost in our services and in our church. And um, we are just going to reach out with everything that we got, especially in the upcoming year. There are a lot less worries in our church. There are a lot less things going on in, in our lives. And um, I'm going to, to tap the shoulder of some in our church and ask you to go one-on-one -on -one door knocking with me. And um, uh, I, want, I want to begin to do that. I want to go out and share the gospel and, and invite people and, and, and uh, let them know that we'll even do home 
home Bible studies. So uh, please open your heart, pray for us, and uh, let's dismiss in prayer and I'll let you go. Lord, we thank you tonight for the opportunity to join together uh, studying the Word of God. I pray, Lord, that everyone that is either watching this live or Lord, we'll watch this uh, later, uh, whenever they get time. I pray, Lord, that you touch them. Lord, those that need healing, we pray for those healings. God, we ask you just to, to bless the congregation of Rehoboth. And Lord, we ask you to, to send us in backsliders and sinners, the unsaved, those that, as Ken said, were rough around the edges. Lord, we want them all. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. I ask you to keep us in prayer, uh, keep the church in prayer, and may you have a good evening. I love every one of you. Thank you.